The top man at the Pentagon right now says China is the biggest threat to the U.S. Acting Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan spoke with me in his first interview at the Space Symposium in Colorado Springs, where he talked up the new Space Force. I started by asking Shanahan about the deaths of three American Marines from a roadside bombing in Afghanistan Monday and a major disconnect. The Taliban is taking credit for that attack, even as the U.S. is sitting down with Taliban leaders for peace talks to try to end the war. This is the hardest part of my job. I send my condolences to the families and the friends of those service members who lost their life. They gave the ultimate sacrifice for which we can never repay. Let's talk about the situation in Afghanistan. We are executing the South Asia strategy. And the South Asia strategy really speaks to reconciliation with the Taliban. And reconciliation comes about from putting pressure on them. We're at war. What you see are the casualties of war. In parallel, there is a peace negotiation process. And probably the best possibility for peace in 40 years is at hand. 14,000 U.S. troops. Is your mandate to cut troop levels there? Our mandate is to execute the South Asia strategy, pure and simple. So is 14,000 a good number for the president? We don't talk troop movements and we don't talk troop levels. Is there hope that this is going to come to some resolution soon? I'm hopeful. I mean, this is a real possibility for peace. But as I mentioned earlier, we are driving down two tracks. We're here at the Space Symposium. Uh, space is really a, a big part of what you're doing right. now. We have a $19 trillion economy that runs on space. Our military runs on space. It is vitally important, and it's a critical domain, just like air, land, and sea. The expectation is over the next 20 years, it will become the industry, space industry will become a trillion dollar a year business. But there's risk and danger in space, and that's really the creation of the Space Force. Chinese and Russians are deploying capability that put our economy and our military at risk in a time of crisis. Critics would say that you're just giving the U.S. Air Force different uniforms. We're consolidating across 10 different organizations into a single structure so we can move more quickly in this very complex domain. What's the thing you spend the most time on as Defense Secretary, acting Defense Secretary, I should say? The future. How so? The ongoing operations are enormously complex. It's been over 30 years since we've modernized. China is modernizing. We need to, as a country, modernize our military. I spend more and more time really laying the foundation and putting that capability in place. Did Jim Mattis give you any advice? Jim Mattis' advice was always, steady as she goes, eyes in the boat. Has it been hard taking over for Jim Mattis? Those are big shoes to fill, but we put in place the right plan. We have the right resources. We're in a period of execution. Does the acting affect your job at all? The fact that you're acting defense secretary? My mother asks me this question all the time. You know, when are you going to be nominated? And what I tell her is, it's an honor and a privilege to serve our country. And I will serve in any capacity the president sees fit. I don't wake up in the morning and think about whether I'm going to be nominated, I do the job. Do you think your time at Boeing is the reason that you, this has been slowed up? I'm glad you brought that up and it allows me to address it. When Congress asked me, would I be open to an investigation, without hesitation I said, absolutely. I'm fully cooperating with the IG. First of all, when I joined the administration, I sold every financial interest I had in the Boeing company. I went a step further, every interest in the defense sector. And this is, this is a point I want to make uh, very clear. I am not biased towards Boeing. I'm biased towards performance. I'm biased towards performance for the U.S. government, for the taxpayer, 
and most importantly, the warfighter. I'm an equal opportunity critic. If I see underperformance, I call it the way I see it. That's what the warfighter expects and that's what they deserve. So you've never favored Boeing in your current job? I have never favored Boeing in my current job and I never will. About the IG report, just to be clear, do you think that the IG report and reaction to it on Capitol Hill has been politically motivated? We'll see. I know I've not made any decisions in favor of Boeing, and the work I've done is to drive waste out of the F-35 program so we can deliver the capability our men and women deserve and at a savings that the taxpayers expect. Is Russia or China the bigger threat to the United States? In China. China's threat economically and diplomatically. You know, I think it's time we, we address some of these issues. Militarization of the South China Sea. The Communist Chinese Party launching cyber attacks against the U.S. Theft of intellectual property and a significant expansion of military capability. It's a world we need to confront. Will America ever be able to truly protect Americans from cyber threats, from countries, from individuals? We will. I mean, it's not tomorrow. And if you ask me what keeps me up at night, which I'm sure you're going to ask me, it's cyber. What I would tell you is the department is aggressively addressing that threat. And across not just the Department of Defense, but working on critical infrastructure and working with our suppliers, allies, and partners. Should the U.S. military be deployed at the U.S. southern border? The mission down at the border, this isn't a new one for the department. We supported the Bush administration, the Obama administration. I think in the Bush administration, we had over 6,000 troops deployed. The president obviously is focused on the border pretty extensively. And because it's degrading, the situation there is deteriorating. Over the weekend, the Homeland Security Secretary, Kirsten Nielsen, resigned. Um, different stories behind the scenes about that, but there was reported tension between the president and the secretary. Did you see that firsthand? I saw a lot of intensity to solve a problem. That's not tension. This is very focused effort. The board is a serious situation. We're all feeling the pressure to solve the situation down on the border. It's an emergency. We have lots of intense discussions at the White House because these are serious issues and they require serious attention. Do you feel that the policy is going to change now that there's a change in leadership at the Department of Homeland Security? We've worked with the acting secretary, the new acting secretary. I'm confident that we'll continue to be able to support the department and we'll continue to solve problems. This decision about Iran and the Revolutionary Guard designating the Revolutionary Guard in Iran a terrorist organization. Does that create problems for you and U.S. troops on the ground in Iraq? The IRGC is responsible for the death of U.S. service members. Uh, this is a policy decision to have non-military effects put pressure on the Iranian economy. We're going to continue to work in Iraq to strengthen security forces. We recognize Iraq's sovereignty. It's our role in country to build security and we'll continue to do that. So now that Qasem Soleimani is essentially a terrorist, will you be targeting him? We'll use sanctions and the appropriate mechanisms that come along with the designation as appropriate. Which includes targeting someone that's we'll a, use, a terrorist We'll use them as appropriate. What's your relationship with President Trump? I have a good relationship with him. He's very demanding, as you know, and he's very engaging. When you hear critics on TV and elsewhere say he's disconnected, he's snapped, he's losing his marbles, I mean, they say all kinds of things on different cable channels. What's your reaction to that? You sit in those meetings. How's your reaction and interaction with the president? He's engaged. He gives us the resources we need to do our job. And he supports us in what we need to defend America. We have extraordinary bipartisan support from Congress. 
we have strong, strong leadership from the White House. We're making the changes necessary to compete and win. You should have high confidence in your military. Mr. Secretary, we appreciate the time. Good. Thank you.